Edge 10.2 is here, so I wanted to run through some tips that will help you out with this new content. The first tip is when you've completed the initial quest to get into the Emerald Dream, you'll actually unlock a portal in Valdraken that will now take you straight to the Emerald Dream, which is great because it's quite a long fly to go from Valdraken all the way to the end of Onaran Plains. Not only that, but this portal will also unlock for your alts as well. So if you don't want to do that initial quest line anymore, you can just go to the portal, take your alt there and start doing stuff within the Emerald Dream too. The next tip is to not ignore Season 3 Explorer gear, especially on alt characters or characters that weren't very geared moving into the patch. You'll be able to pick up some of this gear from the initial quest lines that you do, and also these slumbering boxes are going to be a good source of it as well. And this gear can be upgraded from around 415 all the way up to 437 with just flight stones. And chances are you've fully capped on flight stones, assuming they don't reset them when the patch goes live, which I don't think they will, meaning you'll have a bunch of flight stones and you can get some pieces up to 437 very easily. So definitely don't ignore or you delete your explorer gear. You should also be able to pick up some pieces from the auction house as well. Another quick bonus tip, assuming it doesn't get nerfed to launch, is this area I'm showing you now is really good for farming out those slumber and dream fragments, which we can turn into renewed dream chests, which when opened have a chance of giving you explorer gear. If you've enjoyed these tips so far and you like guide based content around World of Warcraft then don't forget to subscribe as we are pushing towards 90 and hopefully 100,000 subscribers. The next tip will be regarding getting renowned with the new faction the Dream Wardens and there'll be some benefits to this, there'll be some features that unlock, there'll be some pieces of gear that you can pick up, some transmogs and mounts and also the unlimited augment room which is also going to unlock account wide so once you unlock it you'll be able to pick it up on your alts too although you will have to throw down that gold cost of 100k. So the first tip up is to go through all of the main quest lines the side quest lines doing your weekly stuff all on an alt character if you've got one that's geared enough and preferably all those rep tokens you get you'll sit on them as well to use on another thing that I'll mention in a moment. But the idea is trying to get this alt character to renown 10 as quickly as possible and then when you log on to your main and you repeat all those steps again you should be able to rocket your main into high renown. Another thing you can do as well is sit on your rep tokens on both of these characters first of all your alt and then you do this on your main later on as well and then you'll wait for other reputation boosts such as the WoW 19th anniversary to really rocket your renown high. Next up will be a few tips for the Super Bloom. The Super Bloom is the big kind of zone event that happens every hour and there'll be a few things to note regarding this. First of all make sure you're picking up your quest every week. It's not a thing that automatically completes. You will need to pick up the quest, complete the objectives join the Super Bloom for your quest and then hand it in for your weekly reward from that quest. Next up will be that you can repeat the Super Bloom every hour. You won't get that big bag reward anymore where you get reputation and a good piece of gear but you can repeat it for the various reward bags the green, the blue and the purple reward reward bags which will have some dreamstones in, some seeds, stuff like that. And you can also kill the very end boss of the super bloom that can also still give you a chance of transmog I believe and it can definitely give you seeds as well. Also shortly after the super bloom ends another event should pop up called the emerald frenzy. It'll be in a specific location, you'll fly over there, you'll kill mobs, you'll fill up a bar, it doesn't take very long and then you'll get a plump seed from doing that and this happens twice before the next super bloom will happen so you want to keep an eye out and do those as well if you do want extra plump seeds. The next tip may seem kind of weird but you'll get these gigantic gigantic seeds through doing various sources of gameplay such as the weekly rewards from elite rares or one-time treasures. Either way you'll end up with around 3-5 to five per week depending on how proactively you're playing the patch and planting these will have a chance of giving you one of these six mounts or it may have a chance of giving you a seed bloom we're not too sure where that comes from yet it'll either come from these seeds or maybe it comes from the blossom in dream trove which is the purple reward from the progression bar during the super bloom. And my tip for these is to just not use them in the early stages of the patch. Even though that does sound a bit weird, the reason I say this is because the rewards are quite underwhelming right now. You plant your seed and if you don't get a mount, you get about 25 to 50 golds worth of value from it. Not very good for an item that's limited per week. And as I mentioned before, we don't know where Seed Bloom comes from. It used to come from this system. It hasn't been on the PTR, so it could be a case that it's bugged. And if this isn't fixed for live, then eventually obviously Blizz is going to realize and put it back in if this is where it's meant to be. So I would kind of recommend just sitting on them. There's no real harm to sitting on them. See if they end up buffing the rewards. See if they fix Seed Bloom or once we find out where Seed Bloom actually comes from. Yeah, I think you'll benefit overall from sitting on these rather than spending them. Another tip regarding planting and contributing to seeds is currently there is not really much of a benefit to contribute more dew drops than you need to. So what I mean by this is when you plant your seed or you contribute your seed, you'll also have the option to contribute dew drops. And there'll be a progression bar that you've got to get to max to get the best rewards from contributing dew drops. 
maps. Although if you contribute once and everyone else contributes and makes the bar hit the max, then you'll still get the max rewards even though you only contributed once. So basically only contribute as much as you need to to help fill the bar to full. Next up will be a couple of tips for the dream infusion system. This is something you'll unlock at Renown 5 and it's basically just a progression bar that you'll fill up by doing various tasks within the Emerald Dream. Once it's filled you can go speak to the NPC and you'll get yourself a dream infusion which will allow you to turn a mount into a dream infused version of the mount and there's some pets you can do it with as well. The first tip is to make use of the weak aura that was made by Pat Ford. I'll have it linked in the description down below and what this is going to do is show you your current dream essence kind of bar progression regardless of where you are. Normally you'd have to return to the main camp to check your progression but this bar will show you how much you've got regardless of where you are. This is very useful because some activities provide more dream energy than others and you don't want to over cap because anything you over cap with will be wasted. If you want more information about the dream infusion system I do have a full guide on it which will be linked in the description down below. The other tip I have is if you want to get the dream infusion mounts as fast as possible then one thing you can do is make use of your alts because once you've unlocked dream infusions all your alts will have their own dream infusion bar progression unlocked. They don't need to be renowned five so you can take them straight to the emerald dream and you can start working through the campaign quest lines because those give quite a lot of dream energy. You can do all the side quest lines again, you can do all your weekly stuff again and you'll get a lot of dream energy done at once. So this is going to be the kind of faster method of getting your dream infusions for all of the pets and the mounts. The new druid forms coming in 10.2 will be account wide unlocks so you can make use of them on your alt druids but not only that you can make use of your alt druids to help you get the forms faster as well because some of them will be kind of from rares that you can only kill once per day. Some of them will be from the seeds so you're going to have limited access to those per character. So if you want to get those forms faster then you can make use of your druid alts and all of your druids will receive those forms. For any mount collectors I'd recommend you start the process for the Oka Dream Talon as soon as possible because this will be a time gated mount and it will take 23 days total. Each quest will have a 5 day lockout and eventually you'll do 5 quests which will reward you the mount so I'd recommend starting that now rather than later. The final tip I've got is if you're still working towards the Ember Court from Shadowlands then some good news because this will move from a one week lockout to a one day lockout meaning you're going to be able to do the Ember Court every single day and not only that but the board where you re-roll who's going to be invited used to cost 20 infused rubies but this will now cost two infused rubies so every time you want to re-roll someone to attend it'll only cost you two infused rubies which is a great change as well. So this will make getting all your rewards from the Ember Court a lot easier. So those are a few tips to help you out in the patch. Look out for more content coming soon and I hope you have fun in 10.2. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.